as we consider <clears throat> continue our investigation into the nature of light itself this is what light actually is then uh, i want you to remember that we've got an electric field that's going up and down in x and we've got a magnetic field that's going up and down in y which for our picture is kind of into and out of the page and that means that the wave is going to the right so somebody over here is shaking an electron up and down in the x direction and that means that the over here if i had some metal this electric field that's shaking up and down would cause the electrons in the metal to shake also. So this would be a, a broadcasting antenna over here and a receiving antenna over here. That's fine. But uh, <clears throat> then there's this magnetic field. And what really pissed me off about this a few years ago was that at the same time the electric field is a maximum, so also is the magnetic field a maximum. And at this instant in time right here, there's no field at all. There's no electric field, there's no magnetic field. So if we move along with that, there was, there's actually no field. In fact, the energy is being carried by the fact that the electric field is changing, not simply the fact that there is an electric field. So we can do some root mean squared stuff and figure out what the electric field is, and that's our goal today. But I need you to kind of be uncomfortable with this, as I was. The fact that there is no field there feels really weird. Now, let's recall that uh, I'm going to try to do this in purple and in orange, just as we have for our, um, <clears throat> for our graph, that the energy stored in an electric field, this is energy density. I'm going to call it energy density because it's energy divided by volume. So the energy density stored in an electric field we learned from our study of capacitors was one half epsilon naught times the strength of the electric field score. And then we perhaps also remember that from our study of inductors, we found that the energy density of, sorry, of magnetic fields, this B right here, is one half one over mu naught times the magnetic field score. And the interesting thing is we've got both of those at the same time. And in fact, the electric field and the magnetic field contribute the same amount of energy to the situation. So let's write down our total energy density. I guess we'll have to do that in pink or something. The energy density total will be, well, I guess it's going to be one half epsilon naught times E squared plus one over two mu naught times B square, and that's the same thing, uh-oh. Since each of them contributes the same amount, that's simply going to be two of this or two of that. So I can write down another equivalence. That's epsilon naught times E square, and that's also the same thing as B square over mu naught, because each of these is contributing the same, so we've got essentially twice of that, or twice of that. And these guys are sinusoidal. The problem with that is sometimes there's a lot of energy and sometimes there's no energy at all. Does that bother you? It bothers me. Okay, fine. Let's deal with it. The average energy density, though, is one half epsilon naught times the RMS value of the electric field. See, aren't you glad we studied RMS recently? Good. Plus one over two naught times the RMS value of the magnetic field. Somebody said you like take uh, the absolute value and then you average it. It's kind of the same game, but RMS is a little bit cleaner way of saying it. And of course this is epsilon naught times the RMS value of the electric field. And that's the same thing as the RMS value of the magnetic field divided by mu naught because of the same argument that we had right here. But for all sinusoidal structures, we know that the RMS value is simply dividing by root two. So if we find the maximum electric field, we can divide it by the root of two. And if we want the maximum, sorry, I guess we got went the RMS value of the magnetic field, that's going to be the maximum value of the magnetic field divided by root two again. Now consider this, this statement up here is actually a lot more powerful than I had previously acknowledged. The fact that the energy contributed by the electric field and the magnetic field is equal gives us an amazing result. Watch this. I'm gonna scoot this up a little bit and I'm gonna say those two guys are equal to each other. So 
let's see what we can do. I'm saying the energy density of the electric field is equal to the energy density of the magnetic field and now switching colors becomes tedious and I'm gonna say this is one half epsilon naught times electric field sucker square and this is one half mu naught, oh sorry, mu naught's supposed to be in the basement, one over mu naught times magnetic field square and I can immediately cancel out the halves, boom, there they are and I guess I wanna solve it for, what do you wanna do here? You wanna solve it for electric field? Sure. Electric field is going to be magnetic field times some stuff and I guess did I have to screw it? Yeah, I think I did so down here We've got epsilon naught times mu naught screwed it I want you to remember when we did velocity selection for like stuff that's moving through a wire we said if we turn on an electric field and a magnetic field, we found this cool property where the electric field was equal to the speed times the magnetic field. So this thing right here is a speed. And if you do this calculation, we've mentioned this before, if you do this calculation, you find one over the screw of mu naught times epsilon naught is in fact 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. It has units of meters per second, shockingly, and it's a very, 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 very big number. But lo and behold, it is the speed of the wave that travels by the interaction of electric and magnetic fields. And therefore, it is the the propagation speed of light. This is light speed and it has to do with electric fields and magnetic fields and it's fantastically beautiful. The end.